Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm now back creating content and I hope you had a great Christmas and start to your new year. Now I've got lots of exciting projects that I'm currently working on for the next year, which I can't wait to share with you. Now I can confirm that I am working on a new animation course. It's going to be a mini course. I don't know when that's going to be ready. I have been working on it. My plan is to have it ready as soon as possible. But the best way to get the latest updates is to make sure you subscribe to this channel. And you can also sign up to my email list if you wanna get notifications on the progress as I work along. But as soon as it's ready, I will be letting everyone know on this channel. Now also, I am currently running a New Year sale. And this is for people, if you missed out on my Black Friday sale, then I'm running a bunch of discounts across all of my different courses, and it's only on for another few days. So you can check that out via the links in the description. Now this video, we're gonna be having a look at how to track and create little stroke lines and highlight effects using drone footage. Now this is a question that I've, I've received quite a lot last year, was about how do you track various drone footage. Well, I picked this particular clip because it, it's not the easiest one to kind of work with. And I wanna show you a few techniques on how you can create this effect. So these are the effects here that I'm gonna show you how to create. I wanna show you how to create this stroke outline effect. And this is all on footage that is moving. Now this particular clip I source from Envato Elements. You basically get unlimited downloads for stock videos, photos, music, sound effects, plugins, and thousands of templates. If you're interested in checking them out, you can also use my link in the description and that's gonna give you 50% off when you sign up to an annual subscription. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna try and demonstrate really the techniques that you can use and apply to other or your own clips that you source. So the first thing I want to do is really work out this highlighted area. Now pick this clip because there's two different levels. Now a lot of the drone footage, you, you'll just be tracking like a road or something like that. That's straightforward. But what about if you've got something over the top that's covering that, you know, part of that track up? So we wanna try and work out how we can do this. Now the first part is I wanna come over here to my tracker panel. If yours is not there, come up the window and make sure tracker is selected. And you can simply just track camera. That's gonna create a 3D camera. Now we're gonna use a few different tracking techniques and we're gonna layer them together. So now that that's tracked, we get all of these different points. Now one of the mistakes I see people do is they just select a part here and they'll go, yeah, no worries, let's just right click create a solid and or a null on camera and that's all fine. Now what happens is because you have this particular clip that's really basically stretching across the whole video clip, you're gonna get a, a difference in the parallax or the movement from this point all the way down to here. Now, a better way of doing this is selecting individual points that kind of run the length of that, basically the bridge. So if I go across in my timeline here and just select, I'm holding shift, I can kind of select a few different points. Now, if I right click on those and now create a, a solid and a camera, you can see that we now have a camera and we have that solid track to our scene. Now, what I want to do is come up to my pen tool. So I'll make sure nothing's selected. I'm gonna come up to my pen tool. I can make sure no fill and I'm gonna add a really large stroke to this and I'm just gonna draw a line which basically goes across like this and I can scale up that stroke effect. I can hit T and just scale down the opacity. Now what I'm going to do with this, if I turn turn on basically a 3D layer, make it a 3D layer, you're going to see that it's not necessarily tracked into our scene. And that's because it is 3D and it's using the camera. It's just not positioned correctly. So what we want to do is we want to position it to match that bridge. And this is where this solid layer comes in. If we go down to the position, gonna take this, and if I hit P on the keyboard for my shape layer that I just created, I'm gonna paste that layer straight in so it's stuck to that scene. Now, if I grab my points and just kind of move them out, you'll see that we kind of have the shape layer that stays relatively tracked to our scene. Now, the reason it might be slightly drifting here 
is because maybe I haven't selected the best points when I was creating that 3D camera. So if that happens and yours is really drifting, then you really wanna make sure these select points up here and right down the very end of your clip. Now for me, it doesn't matter too much because this is not actually the path that I'm going to be using. I'm gonna create a mask over the top. So I'm okay if this is just slightly larger than the area that I want to use. Now, if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. I'm gonna show you how that actually works. But as long as it's roughly tracked in that position, I could definitely get a better track. And I recommend if this is happening, you go back, but just for demonstration purposes, I wanna show you, even if you didn't do that, it doesn't matter at the end of the day too much. You're just trying to get it as roughly close as you can. Now, what I'm going to do so I can delete that solid now. So we just end up with that layer. And I wanna change the blending mode of this to be overlay. And you can adjust the opacity here just to kind of get that effect that you're going for. But you can see we pretty much have this line or this basically this area highlighted. Now the problem is we can see all of the top part of that bridge and we want it to just highlight this part or, the, or basically the flat part where the cars are driving over the road. So what we can do is we can take our drone clip. I'm gonna duplicate this, bring it up to the top. I can delete the 3D camera. And I'm gonna mask out that bridge. Now there's a few ways you could do that. First, you could use what they call the Roto Brush tool. Roto Brush has come a really long way. There has been a recent update recently again, and that's given you access to the latest tracking algorithm. It is really good, but I specifically picked this clip because I know it doesn't work um, too well. And you kind of get a lot of banding where it kind of jumps around. So I'm just going to basically not use that. Another option is to basically use your pen tool and just create a mask and that's fine. You can manually track it. But the best way still is to use Boris FX mock-up. Now, this is the free version of Mocker, which is built in. And people always ask me, why do I love Mocker so much? Well, this is exactly why I'm gonna show you. If I create a mask of where I want, so keep in mind, this is basically the area that I want to highlight, making sure that I'm tracing around this bridge here because I only want to highlight the surface of that bridge and nothing else. Now I can basically move these sections out here and kind of get it roughly where I need it. Now what I'm going to do is turn on perspective. I'm gonna zoom out slightly here. I can use X on my keyboard to move around and I'm just gonna start tracking that. Now, what, the first thing you're gonna notice about Mocker is it's, it, it just basically locks to that footage. It is so good at tracking, and that's because it's a planar tracker, which is different from how After Effects works, but this is just miles ahead. The other great feature is when you're doing rotoscoping and doing stuff like this, we need to track. They have this basically adjustment, which I'm gonna show you in a second, so you can see here, it's not fully tracked at the end. So I'm missing that from the end of our clip. And this part of the track is moving. Now, what I can do is simply just drag out on this section. I'm just gonna drag out here and readjust wherever this basically is not quite lined up. And what you'll notice is creating this little green line here. Now the best thing about Mocha is it automatically adjusts all those keyframes. If you were doing this in After Effects and you move that in keyframe, the whole track is basically gonna be like this and then all of a sudden it's just gonna jump to that position at that frame. Whereas this, it automatically adjusts all the frames before to basically slowly transition it, saving so much time. Now you can go through any point and just quickly make those adjustments and it just saves so much time doing it this way. So we've essentially just tracked perfectly to this bridge all within just a matter of minutes. You know, this would have taken us ages if we were trying to manually do this or using After Effects to track it all. Now what I can do is just rename this one to, I'm just gonna call this one Road. I'm gonna turn that off because I don't want 
to track any more on that. And now I wanna take out the top part. So I wanna basically highlight this section of the bridge. And this is kind of, you've gotta kind of think in a three dimensional sense here, but you're trying to take out the top part of the bridge or just isolate that section. Exactly like that. Now you can grab any of these points, make them more sort of smooth, adjust it so it kind of goes through. I'm doing this quite roughly because I, I don't need it to be exact. I'm going to turn perspective track on now because I've selected the end frame. I'm going to tra track backwards this time, and it's going to work its way through. The great thing about Mocker is it uses the GPU. It just absolutely flies by. I'm going to rename this one to. bridge top, turn that off as well, turn both of these on, save that, quit Mocha, and back in Mocha, what I can do is come down to the matte settings, and what I'm going to do is select the road part of my bridge and turn off this other part, and I'm just gonna create a mask, making sure my playhead is there at the start. Now what that does, if I duplicate that up, Basically, what I'm gonna do is turn that off, rename this one to to road. Now, if I just, so we've got a mask which sits over our road. Now, what I can do if I take, turn that off and take my shape layer, I'm gonna set the track mat to be the road. And straight away, it highlights just that section of the road. So that's that's absolutely brilliant. We're done with that. What we can do is now, I want to isolate the top part of this bridge. Now, if you remember, we already created that. So if I turn that drone layer back on, and what I can do, if I move this up to the top, I can now select visible layers, hit the bridge top this time, and create the mask. Now I need to delete the road layer because we just want that section hiding at the top. And we've ended up with that section overlaid over the top. So you can see how easy that was to basically do those few steps on something that is not necessarily that straightforward. So it's not an easy shot to work with, but we have made it relatively simple just by using Mocha has really simplified the whole thing. Now say I was working on this and I realized, oh, you know what? This part here doesn't quite work. It's the track's not working. Don't worry, just select that clip again that you're working with, hit Mocha, open that clip back up. Then what you can do is basically go through again and make any of those adjustments that you need so just re-fix that little clip there, whatever didn't quite work, save it, quit. And now if you just select that bridge top, you can just delete that. I'm just gonna go back to my visible layers, make sure my new bridge top is selected, create that mask, and there you go. You've got that updated section over the top. Now with my shape layer, I wanna try and animate that line, that stroke effect to basically go across the bridge. So if I take that, what I can do is come down here. I'm going to add a trims path. Now to that trims path, if I basically offset the end, if I hit end here, I can go across and just go like this, start at zero. And as that basically go, uh, goes across like that, I'm also going to create a start and create an offset for this. Now what that does, is it creates this line effect sort of coming across. Take all of those, right click, make them easy ease. We kind of end up with that line going across. You don't have to do that. You can just have the, the solid line highlighting that entire bridge. It's up to you how you want to do that. 
but that's basically how I did it. Now, if I go back to my original from this point, it's just a matter of duplicating that shape layer, moving it across, which I've done here. That's how I get two stroke lines. I've added a bit of a color grade over the top and that's really simple just by adding a hue and saturation and a bit of brightness and contrast. You can search for those up here under help. There are the settings there if you wanna follow along exactly to get that sort of look. And the other thing I also did was add a stroke outline. Now the stroke outline, I followed the exact same steps that we've already done. I just created another drone uh, layer, came into Mocha and just created a line which went around the outside this time. I tracked that to my scene. I then quit Mocha, created a mask for that layer. Now, instead of just leaving this as a mask, so you'll see it's a mask layer. I added the stroke effect to it. So I came up here, added the stroke effect. And the stroke effect, if you select all masks, will just draw a white line which goes, which follows that mask line. So I've just animated this by creating a start and a, an end point for the end keyframe. So that creates that line which kind of goes around like that. And because that layer is already, you know, that mask is already tracked to my footage, it's following that, that footage, it'll automatically follow the outline of that layer. And again, you can always go back in here to Mocha, readjust any of those mask settings and just update it and it'll automatically update on the timeline. For all the examples that people have sent me over the past year, most of those will be out, will basically be fixed using these methods that I've shown you in this video. In my new mini course that I'm working on, which is my animation mini course, I am going to go a bit deeper into this subject. I'm gonna look at even more complicated scenarios, but most of the scenarios you're gonna run into, you can get by using these exact methods. So hopefully enjoyed the first tutorial back for the year. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos over here on the side of the screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.